Welcome everybody to episode number five of Friday Fruit Clips. We've got some fresh and fruity clips where we expose false teachers, false prophets, and those that would teach doctrine contrary to our holy word. So strap in, here we go. All right, so first up we've got Robin Bullock's wife. Her name is also Robin, and surprise, surprise, she is also a prophet. And so we're going to listen to a clip of her where she talks about something familiar. And I will not forsake those who have stood on my word. See my open hand this day. For they will see that I will have a wealth transfer in this earth. And my people that has stood. So there you go. Here is Mrs. Robin Bullock pulling a page right out of the New Apostolic Reformation's playbook, promising a wealth transfer. But I bet you didn't know there was a condition, and that condition is you must be a tither. Now, if you ever really wanted to know how the Bullocks are worth 20 to 30 to 40 million dollars, well, it's because of stunts like this. Promise the wealth transfer. But in order for you to be a recipient of the wealth transfer, you have to tithe. It's completely unscriptural. There is nowhere in the New Testament which requires us to tithe. And the verses that are in the Old Testament, well, she just takes them out of context. It does not apply to us. But here she wants you to believe that God is speaking through her, where God is saying, I'm going to load up your bank accounts. I'm going to give you land. There's going to be a lot of wealth coming, but you've got to be a tither. This is total manipulation. This is deceitfulness. But what do you think happens in her congregation as well as the millions who listen worldwide? Well, they want to get in on that wealth transfer action. So, uh, you know, they don't want to miss it. So what do they do? Well, they're going, they're going to start tithing. They want to be a part of it. Now, who do you think is going to be the recipient of that tithe? Who's going to be the benefactor? Well, the Bullocks. She's the one that's bringing it to you. She wants you to think that God is speaking through her. So they're going to what? Get a ton of money. Otherwise, you're going to miss that wealth transfer. Talk about carnal. This, oh, this is just so played out. How can people be so stupid? It, it really makes me very sad how they manipulate and how they pray upon the weak-minded, the unlearned, and the simple, the gullible. But they know that it works. That's why they do it. And I can tell you, God is not speaking through this person or her husband. They are scam artists. And that's why they have a ton of money. They use the name of Jesus Christ to get rich. It's called filthy lucre. Stay away from that. Now, next up, we've got... Richard Roberts. Some of you might not recognize him. He is the son of Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts. You remember Oral Roberts? I'm Brother Copeland and your dear wife, Lori, would you look at us? Look on us. Hey. Silver and gold have we plenty. <laughs> So, trust me, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And so, we're going to listen to a couple of clips. From this man, here we go. I said there's going to be an end time harvest of souls. Well, how's that going to happen? It's going to happen right after there is an end time transfer of wealth. And who is that end time transfer coming to? Some of you got your hand up before I finish saying it. 
So again, right on line with the Bullocks and all the other New Apostolic Reformation cult members. It's unbiblical. And they continue to do it. Now, again, just for those of you that don't think this is that serious of a matter, what do you think all these people, all these parishioners, all these uh, followers of these false prophets, what do you think they're going to do when that wealth doesn't come? Well, they're going to walk away from Jesus Christ. It's called shipwrecking faith. And these guys up here are the masters at doing that. All right, we'll move on to the next clip. Here we go. And when they had... When they had done what the Lord said, when they put the praise and worship team, I can see them with their Fender guitars going up and down the road. I can, I can see, I can see Krista Jordan playing the drums going, I, I can see, I can see all that. I can, I can, I can see you robbing over there on the keyboard and in front of that army. I just see it. You, 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 John the Baptist of today. So I, I just wanted to play this little clip. It's very interesting. Yet another guest uh, preacher coming to Robin's church and, you know, lavishing him with compliments like you, 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 John the Baptist. Uh, it's fascinating the hold that Robin Bullock has on many of these I guess, you know, associates that they just outright worship them. But the good news is that at least uh, Richard Roberts didn't tell any stories about them walking naked anywhere, specifically up in heaven. So that's good. But uh, this continues. Listen, the first time I came, I was in a coat and tie, and I was the only person in the whole state that had a coat and tie. I said, if he ever invites me back, I'm wearing leather. And again, you might be asking, what does this have to do with Jesus Christ and him crucified? Well, nothing. It's about the influence that Robin Bullock and his whole cult have on other preachers, other alleged preachers, I should say. This is a, I think a guy's pushing 80 years old and he wants to wear leather. So very disturbing. Speaking of that, it's getting hot. It's getting hot in here. Just look at him over there. Would you leave my coat alone? It's not your size. Just look at him. All dressed in black leather. Sign here says, I don't do demons. It's a modern day John the Baptist. I'm a, a modern day John the Baptist, really? You think John the Baptist had 20, 30, 40 million dollars? Right? John the Baptist lived in the wilderness. He wore animal skins and ate bugs, lived off the land. Any type of wealth revolted John the Baptist. He wanted nothing to do with this world. Robin Bullock and his whole crew, they want everything to do with this world. So I just wanted to point this out because, again, you've got these other associate alleged preachers just showering Robin Bullock with praises. He's got some kind of a hold on. This guy's getting all hot and bothered. He had to take his jacket off. Very, very cultish. All right, we'll play this last clip. There is an end-time transfer that's coming, and it's going to finance the end-time transfer of souls into the kingdom. It's coming, friend. And there's no demon in hell can stop it. 
It's coming. And we're one day closer than we were yesterday. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. He needed to write a song, Robin. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And needs to have that. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Say it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming, friend. Hold it. Say, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. It's coming to me. And yeah, good grief. How sad is this? This is what they're doing in uh, Robin Bullock's church. He's got this audience. And again, all the viewers that would watch this online, they're not excited for the return of Jesus Christ. Now, they may tell you, oh, sure we are, but they're not. They're drooling over this fantasy that they're going to get all this wealth, even to the point where they start chanting things in this alleged church. Very sad. All right, next up, we've got Jeremiah Johnson. Now, Jeremiah Johnson is a confirmed false prophet. He was one of those who falsely prophesied Donald Trump's victory in the 2020 presidential election. He is a patronizing, condescending, egotistical flim-flammer. He's a scam artist. And you'll also note, as you listen to him, he speaks to you like you were a five-year-old child. So we're going to listen to uh, this, and I think this runs about two minutes long, so listen to what he's saying here. You know, when you talk about false prophets, most people go back to the Old Testament and Deuteronomy 13, and they say something like, well, if someone prophesies something and it doesn't come to pass, they're a false prophet and they should be stoned. And they're going to quote the book of Deuteronomy as, as a reason for why they should stone people who prophesy things inaccurately, and then that makes them a false prophet. And that would be correct. Just so we're upfront and on the level, that would be the biblical thing to do. Of course, we're not going to stone them. We are under grace, but he is correct there. But watch him pull the old switcheroo here. And if you actually go back and you read those passages very carefully in the book of Deuteronomy, you're actually going to find out that false prophets, there's always a motive and there's always an agenda there. In fact, it this is true. It's called deception. Uh, for many reasons, they deceive. One is to lead them to other gods. The other is for filthy lucre. The other is for the praises and the adoration of men to present themselves as some great one. But watch how he, again, manipulates this. In Deuteronomy 13, the false prophets are actually leading people to worship other gods. Another translation says that the false prophets are leading a rebellion against God. And so we have to break that down a little bit and understand that we actually don't. It is that simple. And, and notice how he's conspicuously leaving out Deuteronomy 18. He's only citing Deuteronomy 13. We're going to look at these scriptures in just a second. In order for someone to actually be a false prophet, even in the Old Testament, I'm, I'm going to get to the New Testament here in a moment, but even just kind of pulling out this, you know, they, they missed a prophecy, stone them, they're a false prophet. It's told. Notice how dismissive he is, right? He, he's purposefully dismissive. Eh, it's no big deal. He brushes it off. This is what people say, right? He's building up because he's going to try to give himself an out. But he's very dismissive. Totally out of context. It is it is not out of context. This man is such a liar. Go back and read these passages. False prophets are people who lead others into worship of other gods. 
false prophets are people that lead rebellions against God. False prophets are not people who say things are going to happen and then they don't come to pass. So did you hear that? It is stunning. Let me play this again. False prophets are not people who say things are going to happen and then they don't come to pass. So again, I, I'm stunned again. I cannot believe what this person who claims to be a teacher and prophet of the Most High has just said. Can you believe that? Let's go look at this. Uh, let's go look at De Deuteronomy 18. Actually, we'll look at Deuteronomy 13 first. This is what he cited. Verse 1, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. So this right here is what he cited, and it's true. There were prophets back then who, or I should say there were false prophets who did get prophes prophecies correct once in a while, and then they would lead or attempt to lead the Israelites to go after other gods. So that's why these verses exist. It was a problem. But let's do this in real time here. What he, again, left out was Deuteronomy 18. And if we scroll down here, there's three verses here. I'm going to read them first. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Now here are these three verses. This here in uh, verse 20 this tells you the crime and the judgment of being a false prophet. This, or verse 21, is us. This is us asking God, well, how do we know what a false prophet is <clears throat> or who it is? And then this is the definition. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. If somebody does this, here is the judgment of God. And it has everything to do with somebody speaking in the name of the Lord and that thing not coming to pass or following. It's everything in Scripture, what Jeremiah Johnson just said it wasn't. This man is an absolute deceiver, and he is seducing followers of Jesus Christ and teaching them the exact opposite of what Holy Scripture says. And just because he talks like this, like you're some sort of a baby, he thinks that he can get away with it. But we stand against him. He is antichrist. He's teaching the opposite of what our Holy Word tells us. It is so heartbreaking. It, it, and again, I, I want to pause here because I want to give my reaction in real time. To watch these wolves prey, genuinely prey upon the gullible, the simple-minded, the unlearned, is atrocious. Pray, if you're, if you're a praying person, please pray that this man would repent. What he just said is pure evil. And I'm not overstating that fact. When you have a wolf come in the end times here, or for that matter, any time, and preach the opposite of what God tells us in his holy word, it's evil. It is absolutely evil. And he does this so he can give himself an out. He's telling you, if I prophesy anything in the future and it doesn't come to pass, well, you can't be obedient to Deuteronomy 18 and at, at the very least not fear him, but by all means, even according to the New Testament, reject him. He's saying you can't do that. I might prophesy something and it might not come to pass, 
oh well, we just we just all move on. It is again stunning. Now Jeremiah Johnson is not alone on this exact same subject. Here you've got Captain Kuhneman, and he's pretty much asked the same thing. Let's take a listen to what he says. Pastor Hank, please take this for a minute and explain <laughs> how people can make sure things are biblical and true and how to know the difference between a uh, false prophet and an accurate one. You know, listen, um, one of the things that people have is a misunderstanding, unfortunately, about what a true prophet is and what a false prophet is. See how he starts there? Many people have a misunderstanding. They actually don't. But this is manipulation in real time. And, uh, of course, in the Old Testament, what defined a false prophet, if you read the scriptures in Deuteronomy uh, 13 and, and 18, it was talking about those that led people away from the Lord to go after other gods. It wasn't so much based on whether their words were accurate or... No, it's actually both. But again, look how dismissive he is. It wasn't so much, you know, on whether their words were accurate. No, that's a lie. It was entirely based upon that. But this is manipulation. Or were false. Um, many true prophets were stoned falsely because the people did not correctly interpret their prophecies. And that part is not true. True, po true prophets in the Old Testament were not stoned because people misinterpreted their messages. True prophets were stoned because they told the truth. Now, I may be wrong, but I cannot recall one single instance in the Old Testament where a true prophet was stoned because their message was misinterpreted. Now, maybe I'm wrong. But I can't think of one time when that happened. They were stoned because they told the truth. And the kings and the princes and the magistrates, whoever they, the true prophets were prophesying to, uh, they gave their words from God and uh, the kings and the princes didn't like it. So they stoned them. And so that's what happens today. There are, there are people that will label somebody as a false prophet, and really it's because they don't discern uh, the word of the Lord or they haven't allowed those prophecies to, to breathe or to come to pass. To breathe or to come to pass. Okay, so when Hank Kuhneman prophesied Trump was going to win in 2020, can we still let that breathe? Is there a chance that that can still come to pass? And the answer is no. Hank Kuhneman is a confirmed false prophet. But uh, one of the things that we can say is this. When it comes to a true prophet, you've got to look at their fruit. Jesus said you know them by their fruit. Look at their track record. What have they been saying that has come to pass? What is it about their character? You know, who are they connected to? Those are very... Who are they connected to? What does that have to do with anything? It has nothing to do with anything. It, it's just another lie. And as far as what he said, we're, we're supposed to look at the prophecies that have come to pass... Really? But not the ones that haven't come to pass or the ones that can't come to pass? It's, it, this, is such, this is so tragic. Very important principles uh, when it comes to defining what a true prophet is and a false prophet. It's not so much based on, you know, what they said, even though that is important. Because Look at, even though that's, well, that's kind of important. You know, it's not so much based on what they said. You know, the, the, the very office of a prophet is one who speaks on behalf of God, words or messages that God gave them to share with the people. And he's saying, well, it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be true. It's not so much based on that. So again, this is what these wolves are doing. And this only confirms these lies that they tell, which are antithetical to Holy Scripture. This only confirms uh, their falseness. Now, finally, I wanted to give you an update on Mandy Ralph. Uh, Surprise, surprise, the rapture didn't happen on February 5th or 6th, and it's not going to happen on the 15th either. Uh, since then, since I last spoke of her, she's adding, subtracting, modifying her alleged prophecies, her rapture predictions. And so at this point, she's left to her own devices. I, I, I truly think she's nothing more than a troll who has no fear of the living God. And uh, contrary to what she said, we also know that she will not admit she's a false prophet. She will not take down her channel because this is what they do.
So it's it's going to be interesting to watch again how many mature Christians continue to pay heed to this woman. Uh, but at this point, uh, she has demonstrated that she is indeed Second Corinthians chapter eleven for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming them selves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Mandy Ralph's works are as evil as one can get. She is actively shipwrecking faith, and she does not care. She has no fear of God. So with that, uh, certainly pray for Mandy because what she's doing is uh, just despicable. So that's going to wrap up this episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Certainly pray for all these people that they would stop lying in the name of Jesus Christ, that they would stop deceiving and come back to the truth of Jesus Christ. Until next time.